All right. Um, just for the people on Zoom who didn't hear me because I didn't use the mic before, the last thing I said was that we want to live in a world where there's psi data. Um, but, you know, that won't need to be illegal because all of the data will be fair anyway. So, um, but yeah, no, um, I think that this was a fantastic panel to wrap up a fantastic day and a half session. And um, my sort of biggest goal from this point onward is to try to spread the word about what was talked about here. I think, you know, every time I come to a workshop on this topic, I wish that there were 10 times as many people there because, you know, the most important thing is, you know, I, I deal with this where, especially in the data space, but I think, you know, it's really true in the publishing space too, that people will say, oh, you know, that won't work in my field or that won't work for me, or I can't figure out how to do that. And what you see when you come to a workshop like this is that there are a lot of people who have thought very deeply about these issues and are proposing all kinds of solutions that, that probably will work. And I think the most important thing is that we we just keep communicating with each other and sharing good ideas and, you know, helping each other figure out, um, you know, how to move forward. And, you know, I, I don't want to tell people not to complain. I complain. You know, it's fair to say that, you know, this is a problem. It's fair to recognize a problem. But I think it's also very important to recognize the people who are proposing constructive solutions to that problem. And I think we heard a lot of people like that in the last day and a half. And so um, I'm just very excited about how this all went. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> um, just thinking going forward, in addition to the awareness that you mentioned, Jake, I think another thing we wanted to pose to the room and um, Zoom can drop a chat too, is a um, lot to unpack here, right? I mean, what about these industry academic partnerships and, and how to carry a lot of that uh, energy forward? Uh, what about, you know, skills development in more digital, you know, areas so that we are all data scientists <laughs> in, in our emerging lives? What about these areas? What areas um, could we do uh, further events on? Do we need more workshops to kind of dig into any of the, we kind of skim the, sur skim the surface on a lot of topics. Um, you know, what about following the money and, and monitoring and coordinating um, decision-making around the models um, that we're trying to develop uh, to support the very real costs and needs in, uh, in both infrastructure and services? What topics resonate with you? What would you like to do next? I can come up with a list, but I'd rather hear yours. <laughs> At least I should hear from the Chemical Sciences Roundtable folks. So the next workshop series, I think, uh, or the next topic focus um, that um, Linda mentioned earlier was on the artificial intelligence. And that's, of course, extraordinarily uh, timely and so much potential there. Um, and I think it really builds really well on a lot of what we are talking about, about open scholarship and um, data access, um, you know, but there are a lot of other issues around enabling that data to be used in AI. What more do we need to know to, to help your AI case go forward? Thank you, Marty. <laughs> so first, I just want to thank you, Leah, and uh, also Jake and um, uh, Bob and the whole team. It was just a fantastic uh, day and a half. And a lot of thought went into picking, I think, people who could stir the pot and really get a great conversation going. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, to answer your question, I think one of the great things about CSR, we try to get the whole team together and brainstorm around these questions. And I know right after this, we have our business meeting. We're looking forward to doing exactly that. Uh, so I definitely don't want to speak, okay, for the team. But we will definitely follow up and try to think about how what happened over the last day and a half could impact lots of great ideas moving forward. I'll just speak for myself and say that one of the things that I get most excited about after the last day and a half is kind of where my last question was, you start to imagine a world that's different and better, more exciting and more empowered if lots of the things that we talked about last day and a half come to fruition in a way that is constructive, that is enabling. And I think that's where things could potentially be really exciting. Like, I'm a big fan of, you know, thinking about where you really want to get to. What question do you want to answer? What problem do you want to solve? How do you want to make the world a different, better place? And then work backward from there. So when we think about 
open access, I would encourage us all to do exactly that. Like imagine a world where X is possible if we could achieve all that open access empowers us to do. Now let's work backward from that envisioned much better world and figure out how to make sure open access delivers on that objective. So that's something I think we could all think about. Like, how do you imagine the world a better, healthier, safer, right, more equitable place in the future? And now how does that open access help us achieve those objectives? That's how I would try to think about it. Appreciate that visionary vision leads to leadership. So thank you, Mark. <laughs> So what I've been hearing quite a bit about is we need a new business model. We need a lot of creativity in thinking about a business model for how this will work. And certainly if you look at other fields like the open source software model, um, and this was brought up in the panel, they figured out a business model to make it such that the people got recognized for, for their input and that they would be able to share under those circumstances. And I think that our, our model is different with chemistry because we're working with tangible physical objects as well as just software. And I think we need to, as a community, really think creatively about how do we set up a system of rewards and a social structure whereby creativity can be can flourish and it's a much more equitable system than we have currently. So I think that's where we need to really think creatively as a community. How do we set up a completely new business or social model to be able to harness all the creative energy that we have in this community? Thank you for calling out the social aspects. <laughs> so just, uh, two items real quick. Um, one to echo the um, sentiment about AI. I should also point out that the um, National AI Research Resource is currently being set up by the NSF, and they're in fact seeking input uh, from domain uh, researchers in terms of what resources are needed, what sorts of problems are wanting to be explored. Um, I think if you just Google NAIR survey, um, that'll be, um, you can access that and they're, uh, I don't wanna say desperately, they're, but they're very interested in uh, obtaining your opinion on that. So they uh, look forward to that engagement. Um, and then uh, I get another self-serving um, comment or whatever that one uh, domain that might be fruitful here and to echo a question I asked yesterday is standards, uh, both in terms of um, ontologies, um, data structures, metadata structures, um, that um, looking perhaps outside of chemistry and other exemplars um, to see what challenges they encountered, what best practices are out there, and um, what sorts of uh, workflows are enabled uh, once we have really good um, standards, because it's really that value that it's incurred by that that I think motivates a lot of these efforts, so. Excellent, thank you. Value proposition, use cases, um, other adjacent fields. Thank you for that. I have a very practical question, the spirit of taking this forward and spreading the word. Are the slides or uh, Recordings going to be made available? Linda, question. Uh, yes, apologies for those in person. Uh, our recording, the recording of this workshop, as well as the um, presentation slides and a summary of the workshop. So it's a 12 page summary highlighting the discussions here will all be posted on our event page um, website. I can email it to you all. And I think in a follow-up email to all registrants, we'll have that link as well. I, I think I checked with Eric ahead too. This is something that we could share broadly in our communities as well. Yeah, once it becomes available. So just one more thought to add, because AI was brought up and I, I think it's such an exciting interface that I want to amplify one point. <laughs> Again, there are 8 billion, 8 billion imaginations in the world today, arguably our greatest natural resource on the planet. And it's what AI can't yet do. We're trying, people are trying, but it's still something super special about human imagination potential. <laughs> and of course it comes from everywhere, right? So we find a way where everyone can participate. All of a sudden you're tapping in to 8 billion imaginations, right? Across the planet. It's always fascinated me that still it's true that AI plus a chess master can still beat AI. 
And there's a lot of discussion around why that's true, but it's really interesting. If you really try to think about why is that true? And I think for at least a couple hundred years, it's probably gonna be true. So this human machine interface is gonna be super interesting. And we also, of course, from history understand talent and brilliance, it comes from everywhere. So if we can figure out how to get open access right and tap into that 8 billion imaginations from a problem solving perspective, it's very exciting to think about how AI becomes a partner in concert with an open access world to achieve some pretty extraordinary things. Partnerships, excellent emphasis, um, humans and machines, <laughs> as well as many different uh, stakeholder groups. Thank you for that. Uh, there's also been a suggestion on Zoom, so I'd like to read this out. Um, this, this colleague says, I would be interested in more discussion about impact of increased public access to federally funded research on repositories being used for training of LLMs, positives, negatives um, around attribution, commercial reuse, and source acknowledgement, and uh, implications in the trust in science. So another really meaty topic. Um, you know, that a very we, good question. Yeah, excellent. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just echoing that it's a very good question. I mean, you know, this is sort of the, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I share Marty's optimism, but there's a pessimistic sort of, you know, Skynet becoming self-aware take to, to that whole vision of the future where, you know, it gets access to guides to make various nefarious substances, explosives, what have you, and, and then dooms us all. And, um, you know, I, I confess that generally when I hear people talk about that, I have a little bit of trouble taking it seriously. And I think, oh, you know, right now we have so many checks in place and, and, you know, nothing is stopping a human being from doing that. But, you know, again, I, it, that, that I think is the challenge. I mean, I think the challenge is that, you know, and it's a challenge in science writ large, right? We have to assume that the vast majority of people working in the space are working in good faith. And I, you know, my whole experience in the business is still that that's true. You know, I would say the great majority of the people are indeed working in good faith. There's a small handful of them that aren't. And, you know, how we build in checks to make sure that, um, you know, there, there aren't problems introduced that, you know, the dangers of um, dangerous materials and, and dangerous protocols are well bounded and well constrained, and that we're careful about, you know, the introduction of, of misinformation or false information. You know, that's the other thing that, you know, I think is true in general about, you know, open data and, you know, I think was what was so good about, um, you know, Shannon's talk, right, is, you know, it's still helpful for human beings to be looking at that data, to be opening it, to be, you know, verifying that it actually is at least to to a great extent what they're claiming it is. And and so, you know, I think um, there's um, there's an exciting future ahead, but but, you know, we we need to be prudent at the same time. Thank you for that summary, Jake, and all the vision in this group. So this is the gift that OSTP has brought us with this memo of this opportunity to think and come together as a domain and um, uh, and think about our future together and the opportunities and how we work together to make that happen. So want to, you know, to me, that's the value add to OSTP memo. It's hard to understand what what's that, you know, but I think we've I think we've moved ourselves forward on that conversation. So thank you, uh, everyone, for the last couple of days. I really also want to thank the National Academies for enabling us to have this conversation. This is such a great resource. They bring together so many connections across um, science and research and innovation in the United States. And thank you very much for the opportunity to, to participate in this event. And I look forward to hearing what comes out of this Chemical Sciences Roundtable and, and other activities. And I think lunch is waiting. Any last words, Linda? Echoing uh, Leah, I wanted to thank you all, um, participants, speakers, panelists, um, and the overall chemistry community for chiming in. Your input has been heard, and um, I hope you all continue the dialogue in whatever capacity you choose. And also thank you so much for the Chemical Sciences Roundtable members. It was really their idea 
uh, last year when they um, saw that this was an issue that was going to continue to percolate and um, impact the chemistry community. And they said, hey, uh, CSR should really do something and bring a lot of people together to talk about this. And uh, so again, I want to go back to the CSR members for really keeping their eye out on the issues ahead. And thank you so much. And I think Jake? And just, you know, special thanks to um, Rob, who unfortunately, due to a family emergency, had to miss the lion's share of the meeting, but he was really instrumental in helping plan this entire thing. And we all benefited a great deal from his assiduous work. Thank you, Nassim. <laughs>